Hi, I'm Tyler. I'm one of the IT professionals on the IT department here in Somerville. And uh, we're going to take some time here in this video to go ahead and show you our new technology that we've been rolling out over this summer. This here is a clear touch board. This is going to be replacing the smart boards throughout the district. Uh, many of you may have already noticed them in your classrooms. That's great. So we're going to go ahead and teach you how to use them now. So in this training video, we're going to cover things like the hardware. We're going to cover some of the built-in features that the board has without using your MacBook. We're going to show you how to use your MacBook with the board. And then we're going to show you some of the tools that uh, support the instruction of uh, your classroom with the board. And then some other hit, uh, helpful tips and features. So to get started, here's the hardware. Uh, the board is a 4K display, so it's nice and crisp and clear. It has over 20 points of touch, so that means that more than one student can write on it and touch and interact with it at a time. Unlike the smart boards, only one student could use them at a time. They have easy controls, so it's really easy to use. They have built-in speakers, so you don't have to worry about you know, uh, messing with other speakers that are hanging on the wall. It's all built in, and they come with two built-in magnetically attached pens on the panel. So to get started, we'll talk about this control panel that's at the bottom of this screen right here. You have your power button, your home button, your back button, your menu button, and your volume controls. So your power button, pretty self-explanatory, turns the board on and off. There's a few power states. There's on, which we're in right now. There's standby mode, and then there's completely off. Uh, when you're done using the board for the day, you want to just press and hold that button, and then the board will shut down. If you're looking to just kind of turn it off temporarily for a few minutes, you can just press and release that button, and it'll go into standby mode so that you can quickly resume when you're ready. The home and back buttons refer to the Android side of the, ta of, the, of the board. So this here is a fully built-in Android tablet. So that will bring you, just like on a, on a tablet, to your home screen, and that will bring you back to the previous screen that you were displaying. The menu button will bring up the input menu. That allows you to switch between Android and the MacBook. And then your volume controls will control how loud the volume is coming out of the unit. So we'll get started by talking about that Android side that that home button refers to. So when you turn the board on on the Android side, you'll see you have a home screen, you have apps that you can install. The board comes with apps pre-installed. You have EasyNote, which is like your smart notebook. It's just built into the board. You have an internet browser, you have Google Earth, you have uh, TED, which is a good place for uh, interesting speeches and videos. Um, there's all kinds of apps that are already built in. And then there's also apps that you can install. So there is a clear touch store that you can go ahead and you can install apps that are available on that store. Classroom Dojo is one of them. Kahoot is another. So there's a lot of apps that you can go ahead and explore that store and you'll be able to see what uh, might benefit you. So I'll flip over into that Android side now just to show you real life what it looks like. This is my home screen. I have more apps down here. If you're familiar with the Android operating system, it works exactly the same way. So these are the apps that I have. And if I jump into the Clear Touch store, then I'll be able to see what apps are available for download. It's a, it's a curated store, so only educational applications are available. You know that they're safe. You know that they work because they're handpicked from the Google Play store and put in this store. So go ahead and when you have an opportunity, go ahead and take a look and uh, you can walk through some of these applications that are available. So if I switch back to my MacBook side here, we'll talk about that application I was talking about, EasyNote, which is that smart notebook equivalent for the Android side. This is basically the interactive whiteboard of the Android operating system. Um, this part supports the multi-touch. It has different backgrounds. You can add shapes. It's pretty well featured. So we'll jump back over into Android and show you what that looks like if I open EasyNote right here. I have the board. It comes up with like a chalkboard. I can use my finger or the pen and I can write on the board. If I want to erase, I have a stroke erase. Just swipe and then any piece of one stroke will be erased. I have shapes that I can put on here. I can do two-dimensional shapes. I can do three-dimensional shapes. What's cool about this is the 
writing plane is infinite in all directions. So I can go ahead and take this view frame, view frame button and I can shrink it and I can move my view anywhere on this infinite plane. So it allows you to really kind of expand your workspace and continue to go without maybe necessarily going to a new page. If I ever want to reset back to that 100%, back to where it originally was, I just click this button right there and it goes back. There's also different pen colors to choose from. I can select the color, I can select the size of the pen, so that all those things are available to you. There's also another feature, um, if you want, there's kind of an artistic side of the board. You can open this up, it allows for more artsy paint brushes and colors and color matching. Um, up to you how you wish to implement this into your classroom, but just know that that is available. You can have as many pages as you want, just press the plus page button and then you can go back and forth between the two pages. On this side of the board we have the menu. This allows us to save any notebook files that we have or export them. Uh, there is a cloud storage option. You can sign into your Google Drive here and then you can push files to your Google Drive. However, you cannot open files from your Google Drive. Um, what I've been suggesting people is that they get themselves a little flash drive and they can plug files, uh, their flash drive in right to the board right there. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like with the board. If I plug in a flash drive on one of these USB ports and then I can save this notebook file. If I go here, save, and then I can select my USB stick and save it there. In the PowerPoint that you've been sent, we've included a quick reference guide so that you can go ahead and reference this uh, as you're using the board, as you get to uh, know the board, it kind of lays out all the tools in EasyNote so that you can get familiar with them and, and uh, start using those tools. So when you're not using the Android side, we have the MacBook side, similar to how you've used your smart board. When you want to connect your MacBook, there's two wires. You have your USB and your HDMI. HDMI is for display. USB is for touch. Uh, the sound will travel through the HDMI cable to the board. Uh, for the first time you set it up, your display settings may go a little weird. If it's the first time you're connecting your Mac, that's normal. All you have to do is open up your display settings and change it to scale to 1080p and uh, we'll show you how to do that. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to the tech department and we'll be glad to help you with that. What's nice about the clear touches is they're also compatible with the Chromebook. So if you ever have a student that wanna connect their Chromebook up to the board, that's fine. The Chromebooks have HDMI on them. You can just connect that and they'll also be interactive also if you plug the USB in. So you've seen me do it a few times, switching back and forth between the Mac side and the Android side. If you want to switch inputs, you can do it one of two ways. We can do that menu button that I was talking about before. Just press that and click the input that you want to go to. You can also switch back and forth by swiping up from the bottom, and that'll bring up the same menu as well. This menu also gives me a place to control the volume and the screen brightness. So next we'll talk about this sidebar. There's this little arrow that's here. It's always here. It's on the Android side and it's on the Mac side. This allows me to kind of interact with different tools that are built in uh, throughout the, the experience of using the board. So we'll start at the top. This button right here will bring me to EasyNote. So no matter where I am on the board, whether I'm on the MacBook side, whether I'm on the Android side, I can click that button and it'll port me right over into, an, uh, into EasyNote on the Android side. I go back to the MacBook side. Let's say I'm working on a, on, a, on a PowerPoint here and I want to write on it. I want to take some time and I want to highlight some things and I want to write on it. If I click the arrow and I click on the pen, then I'm going to have the tools here that I can write on. It takes a screenshot of the screen and now I can write on top of the content on my MacBook. I can even highlight if I wanted to. When I'm done, I can save this picture and I can put that on my flash drive or I can just discard it by clicking the X. The next tool that's on there is the freeze screen. So if I click that blue button, that's going to freeze the screen. That's similar to like the freeze screen on the smart board. 
This also allows me to zoom in on certain things. So if I want to highlight a certain thing, uh, a certain part of the content on the board, I can zoom in and it'll show me that just like that. On the remote, you can also click the blue button and that will do the same thing. So next we have some interactive tools. On here we have this little bottom portion. We have four tools in here. We have a spotlight. Spotlight's good if you want to highlight, again, a certain part of content on the board. So say you're doing a math lesson and you want the students to work on a problem and you have the rest of the problem worked out. You can go ahead and pull up this, this uh, spotlight here. I can darken everything else out and I can make it big enough so that you can see that math problem. And we're ready, when we're ready to go over it, we can just clear that and the rest of the board will be displayed. Down here we also have a countdown timer. The countdown timer works just like this. I can set the time. When it's done, it'll make a sound. What's nice about the countdown timer is it also can go full screen if you needed to do that. Over here there's also a stopwatch, so this counts up instead of down. There's lap features, so you can go ahead and use that. And you can move this around as you're using the MacBook side behind it. So now the last thing that we have here is AirClass. AirClass is kind of a built-in interactive tool uh, for classrooms. So if I open up AirClass here, what it's going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to create this classroom session. So the way that this will work is your students, and you can distribute this code either via classroom or email to your students. There's a little code down here. It's a number, 10.254. And it may be different for you. Just have your students type this code into their Google Chrome web browser, and it'll allow them to join this classroom experience. So if I go ahead and join my phone to it, I'll show you what uh, some of the features that we have on on the, um, on the air class here. So I'm just going to join the class. And, on the, on the, and this would be on the students' Chromebooks. They have basically a clicker. So if I enter the class, I can now pose questions to the students. So I can go ahead and enter a voter. And let's say I wrote a question on the board. Let's say I wrote you know, a multiple choice question, A, B, C, or D. So I can have the students now answer the question. If I want to say the answer is A, I'll submit A. And then as every student submits their answer, it'll show up. When I'm finished, I can click Finish, and then I'll get a printout of the responses. I can select which one is the right answer, and then I can click Explain. And now I can move this around as I go over the content that's on the board. Another thing that's fun for review games is Responder. Responder, basically, whoever hits the OK button first, their name will display. That's good for review games if you're playing that for review uh, in, your, in your classroom. Message, we recommend you leave message turned off. Uh, message is a cool feature, but it definitely has time, a, a way that it could become a problem. Um, there's a little no symbol on there. Just make sure that that's present. If it's not, uh, basically it allows the students to type and send any message and it'll float across the screen. So we wanna, we wanna definitely keep that turned off. Uh, just unless you find a way that you can you know, very carefully manage that, it, we recommend you keep that turned off. So that's Air Class. Uh, right now what we'll do is we'll go over some things. If you go into your room and you wanna use your board and it's maybe not plugging in right, not working right, these are some things that you can do on your own to quickly rectify any uh, common issues that you may see. Um, we'll leave that for you to take a look at and reference in, your, in the printout that we've provided you. Uh, again, some more troubleshooting. And then we've also provided some helpful links that you can refer to to kind of get acquainted with the board and find resources to, to learn how to use the different features that the ClearTouch has to offer. So, uh, I hope this training video was helpful. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to Melissa or myself or the tech department, and we'd be glad to help you. Uh, you can always submit a work order, and uh, one of the members of the tech department will stop by as soon as we can to kind of help you through the board and, and rectify any issues that you may see. Uh, thanks a lot.